Okay, so I think we can start for, for today's lecture. That's the uh, last lecture of the course. Okay, <coughs> we will do uh, an exercise uh, that is already online on the course website. So let's pick it up. So from the detailed schedule as usual, you'll find everything, but uh, you can find it uh, also uh, from the rest of the material. Okay, that's a sample project. That's not, of course, the, the project for, for next exam. Okay, but actually it was an actual exam. Okay, from June 2022. Okay, two years ago. Of course, for another course, because this course didn't exist. Okay, uh, let me open it in a more stable way. Uh, downloads. Uh, um, let me open it in GitHub. Uh, okay, materials. No, not material. It's in. It's no, what's exam? I don't remember where I put it. Ah, in AW weeks. Okay. Okay. Then soon we will be reading this, uh, okay, and try to design uh, how to approach the problem, okay? So it's not about uh, solving everything, because uh, of course in three hours we cannot do that much. I will publish a full solution of this. Uh, um, of this text of this project, okay, but uh, uh, we will not be able to develop everything in the room here, okay. But uh, the important thing is that we start uh, in a, in a good way. So it means uh, we design, uh, we start from a good design, okay. And also, since we are here together and we can talk each other, uh, uh, and I appreciate that you came forward for this last lecture. We can uh, evaluate different possibilities, different approaches, different ideas on how to solve the problem, okay? Uh, before uh, proceeding on, you know, on doing this activity, uh, since somebody of you has asked me how to register for the GitHub Classroom and so on, uh, I will show how, how it should be done, okay? There are instructions, so, um, if you go into the course website, so exams and rules, there are the GitHub classroom instructions, which should be quite detailed, okay? You just need to have a GitHub account. At, at the first access, if you didn't do it yet, you will be presented with uh, two screenshots where you need to allow GitHub Classroom to access your GitHub account and then you will uh, uh, attach your student name, okay, to the, um, um, to the, your GitHub ID, okay, GitHub user, okay? And then once you did this, you are, you are, you are done for the whole year, okay? Hopefully just for one exam, <laughs> the only one you, you should submit and hopefully pass, okay? And then you can uh, accept uh, any assignment, okay? For the moment, there's just one exam that you, that you can accept, that is the first exam, okay? Uh, a, a new repository will be created by GitHub Class, and then you, can, you have your own repository. It's a private repository just for you and the teachers, okay? So nobody else can see what you're doing there. Uh, and you're, you're free to use it uh, as you like, okay? Pushing any commits you like or just push the final solution, we don't care, okay? We will just uh, uh, use it as a submission system, okay? So, let's uh, have a look at how the system works. Well, I prepared a, you know, a test uh, student, okay? Which, unfortunately, this Abisso Dorato registered for, so it means it will not be able to give the exam, right? I don't know why students should do these kind of things. I'm not sure if it's here in the room, I'm not sure if it's uh, from you, okay? Hopefully not, okay? I know this is uh, this, um, how to say, 
um, uh, course of study about cybersecurity. We should be protected from these things, you, you might think, okay? But the only way we can protect is we create your GitHub account, we give you a GitHub account with a password and so on, so we control everything, okay? We thought, I mean, uh, for the last four years, this thing worked uh, quite well, so we thought uh, it was a nice uh, way to proceed, but if we need to change it, we will change it actually for next year probably. So, at the moment, si since I'm the teacher, I'm the one in charge of managing this stuff, I will detach this abisso dorato, okay? And that's all. So, I can operate, okay? When you, when you see the list with the names, please make sure you select your name, okay? Because we will use the match between the GitHub accounts and the names at the exam. And if they don't match, we can't do anything, okay? We cannot accept uh, somebody that comes in and says, uh, this, uh, this is my student ID card, it says a certain name, and then you submit it uh, with another name, okay? We could even refer you to some academic uh, places where, where you, I don't know, what they, they are going to do <laughs> with you, okay? Because it's like uh, coming to the exam and saying that you are another person, right? Okay? If you want to register, okay, and you don't find the name in the list, you should send me an email, a telegram, or whatever, and I'll sort out this, the, the situation, okay? Probably somebody else is registered instead of you, okay? So it's not your fault because you didn't register yet, okay? But I will talk with the other, I will write down the name of the GitHub uh, user for the other and see what happened, okay? So, let's say uh, we uh, start from the place where you start. So, actually, GitHub, okay? Uh, and the uh, Polito, the user website, okay? go to the exam uh, page, there's a ticketing system that this link, GitHub Classroom, that gives you uh, the possibility to accept the assignment and it creates your repository, okay? You just have to click on this while you are logged in with GitHub, okay? So, uh, in short, GitHub Classroom doesn't ask you to log in on GitHub and so on, okay? It's better if you do it while you are already logged in in GitHub, okay? So let's try it. You see there's a list of students, okay? And uh, you go down until you find your name, okay? Since I didn't want anybody using <laughs> the name, okay? I, I put this, just to remember that this is actually not a real, a real student, okay? I will delete it afterwards. Um, and so, uh, at this point, you just accept the assignment, okay? By the way, there's also an explanation here that says uh, your account, GitHub account, is linked to this name on the roster that is the student list. If it is wrong, please reach out to your instructor. That's me, actually, okay? Me or my colleague Antonio, but mostly me, okay? And uh, you just need to accept the assignment. It doesn't imply anything. I mean, you can just simply not submit anything. It doesn't mean you are enrolled in the exam, okay? Enrolling in the exam means going to the Didattica Polity website, so the uh, orange portal, and click and, you know, say that you would like to come to the exam, okay? Accept the assignment. Okay, it might take a little bit. Sometimes it fails just to retry, it should work. Okay, in case it doesn't work, just write me an email or something, okay? So your repository has been created, and actually that's the repository, it gives you the link, and the link is actually very standard link, okay? The point is that it's accessible only from your GitHub account, so it's a private repository, okay? So now I can access it, okay? And since I'm in the teacher, I can access yours as well, but you will not able to access your friends, even if you know your, the, the GitHub name, of course. Okay, so that's uh, the starting repository. That's the actual repository which I put uh, as a starting point also on today's uh, lecture. 
uh, here in the uh, um, week uh, 14, okay? So in week 14, actually, uh, lecture examples, week 14, okay? There's this sample exam, and actually this is the starting code that you will have at the beginning, okay? The exact same starting code. That basically says, uh, I mean, the most important part is probably this uh, draft of the readme file, okay? But you, you will have a complete readme file as well once we finish, because I will publish a complete solution including the readme file. So you have an example also for the readme file, okay? So in short, you should, uh, uh, you know, edit this file, put your first name, last name, and what you did in the application. The ap client application routes, so uh, API server one, API server two, database tables, main components, a screenshot, uh, and other information like uh, username and password, typically, okay? That's uh, what we need in the readme file. That's a starting point for the exam, for us, because we first need to understand what you think, what you thought uh, when you started designing the application, okay? So we'll read the, the route, so we understand more or less wi which pages, which view you have in the, in the application. And then the APIs, because that's a way by which the client communicates with the server and vice versa, so we understand more or less what are the operations, main operations involved in running your application. And then we can start where well, tables, tables are also useful sometimes, but I mean, very simple ex exams, uh, typically most of you have the same tables, okay? So, I mean, th we don't expect so much variation in the tables. Uh, I mean, there's a table user, of course, there's a table for, for I don't know, for the tickets uh, or for, uh, uh, we will see the study plan and so on, what's, what's inside the, the, the um, the text of the project, okay? And the screenshot just to make sure that everything is, looks uh, as you expect, okay? In case something doesn't work and should look differently and so on, okay? So at least we have an idea of the correct starting point. Don't forget the, the passwords, okay? Keep the, the default password is fine, PVD, uh, password and so on, that's fine. I know it's a cybersecurity course, okay? But also, I know it's, I mean, if you use a really strange password, we need to cut, copy and paste every time while doing, you know, the test, and it takes a lot of time. So, um, I mean, it's, it's fine to keep a, a simple password as well. Uh, okay, so let's start. So let's have a look at this uh, sample uh, of uh, an exam, okay? Uh, I understand that you now are thinking to, <laughs> to another uh, uh, text, okay? That's for exam number one, but if you think of, uh, you know, submitting solution for exam number two, you still don't have the text. So this could be something like that, okay? <coughs> so design and implement, of course, a web application to manage the study plan of a university student, okay? So it means inserting courses, being able to remove courses and so on. Of course, I mean, we cannot stop here because otherwise everybody can implement whatever uh, he or she thinks is appropriate, okay? So there are a set of specifications that you should follow, okay? So we expect the application to have certain features, certain functionalities, okay? So the application must satisfy the following requirement. The university offers a series of courses. Each course is characterized by unique seven characters code, a name, and an integer number of credits, okay? So typically there are a set of definitions just to make sure that we speak the same language, okay? Like a ticket, a ticket is composed of this, this, and that, okay? Uh, or the course is something that has these properties, okay, that identifies a course, okay? 
A student study plan is a subset of the courses offered by the university. A total number of credits of the course inserted in the study plan can range from 60 to 80 credits, extremes included, okay, for the full-time option or 20 to 40 for part-time option. Okay, so there are two kinds of study plans, full-time and part-time. A course can have one or more constraints for its insertion in the study plan. A course can be incompatible with one or more courses, so one or more, one or two or three or n, okay? They cannot be selected together. It's like uh, the Italian and the English version of the same course, for instance, okay? There will be examples later. A course can have one mandatory preparatory course, just one, okay? I know it might not be real, I mean, but we are not trying to develop the Politos application, okay? We are just trying to develop something for the exam, okay? So typically when we make these uh, statements is to simplify things, okay? If you know there's just one, maybe you can keep it in the same table in the database or it's easier to handle these things uh, because you just need to keep one, so just one element and not an array of elements and so on, okay? In this case, just one mandatory preparatory course which must be already present in the study plan. Course can have a maximum number of students able to add it in the study plan, okay? Can have, okay? So not all, okay? In the home page of the application, an authenticated, anonymous, uh, why this is in red? Well, the red is, uh, because this is the final version. There will be some red parts also in the assignment, for exam one, exam two, and so on because we get your feedback, like we are getting now, okay? You have the comments on the Google Doc, and on Monday, typically after one week, so more or less on Monday, I will close the possibility to add comments. I will summarize everything. I will modify the text, uh, clarifying all the things that were not clear given the comments that you left, okay? Some of I say the Okay, I don't understand this, uh, this is not clear, it should be hours, minutes, uh, whatever. I will add these things in the text, and these things will be marked in red, okay? Just for, for your convenience, so you know what has changed from the first version of the, of the text, okay? Okay, so actually somebody has asked uh, uh, if they are users or not users and so on, so when we mean, uh, when we say unauthenticated users, well, actually in the text, we, I think we wrote something like a generic visitors, okay, to avoid this problem now. Uh, but in general, it's, it's somebody that is uh, using the website and it's not uh, uh, authenticated with the website. So it didn't perform a login action, okay? It didn't send a username and password. Well, we don't know who is using the, the website, okay? So unauthenticated users see all the courses that the university offers. The list of courses must be displayed in alphabetical order by course name. Yeah, please don't forget these small things, okay? I, I know they are small, they're probably one line of code, but uh, they help us during the test, okay, when we are searching things. Uh, and also, since they are so easy to implement, I mean, I don't think they are really a difficult thing to, to handle, but uh, I mean, if you forget it, uh, I mean, something needs to be done at the exam. So, I mean, it's not uh, really a big problem. It's not like I, I, I made the authentication wa uh, wrong. I mean, I, I stored the password in clear text and stuff like that, of course. Uh, but I mean, try to follow all the specifications. Not, not, uh, um, don't forget any, any pieces, okay? For each course, the list shows its description so actually the description is the code, the name, the number of credits, number of students that already chose the course, okay? So there is also the number of students that already chose the course, and if present, the maximum number of students that can select it, okay? Each course description may be expanded, contracted by the user to show an, incompati an incompatible and or preparatory course. Okay, then somebody has asked, what should we show? the name, all the information about the course, and so on, so we add the display, at least their code, okay? If you do more, that's fine, but this is not required. Many courses may be in the expanded state at the same time, so actually, more or less, it's uh, like the ticket uh, uh, exam that, that you are 
mm, seeing now for, for the first exam, okay? There are places, things that can be expanded at the same time. Once logged in, in the logged in home page, users continues to see the same full course list, okay? The full course list, so all the courses offered by the university. In this page, if no study plan has been created, the user may create an empty one, so it may create a study plan if there's no study plan yet, by specifying the full-time or part-time option. This empty list can be edited according to the following instructions. If study plan is already being created and persistently saved, it's immediately displayed and can be edited as below. So if there's already a study plan stored in, in the database, it's loaded, okay? If there's no study plan, you have the possibility to create one, choosing either full-time full or part-time. The editing of the display study plan allows the following operation. Allows, uh, always display the number of credits corresponding to the courses in the study plan, so the total, and the minimum, maximum and minimum allowed values depending on the study plan, full time or part time. Other courses form the full list of the study plan, so you need to have the possibility to add a course. It doesn't make, it doesn't uh, make, it uh, doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't imply that uh, you need to be able to add in the sense of dragging from one place to another, okay? That's difficult to imply. Just, there's a button, there's a way, uh, something that can be clicked, uh, like an arrow, whatever you like, that takes uh, the, the course from the list and put it into your study plan, okay? Only courses that satisfy all constraints can be added and the constraints were above, okay? so. The constraints were, you know, this one, the compatibility and all the stuff. Remove a course from the study plan if, the, if this does not violate any preparatory constraints. Otherwise, the application should display the reason, so it should say something, okay? You cannot move it because... If a course cannot be added, it will, mark it, it will be marked differently in the full list and the application should display the reason. Okay, so like a, a button which is disabled and you over over the button and something comes out or it's already there, okay? The, the explanation is already there. During the editing session, the user might save the study plan in a persistent way. This will replace any possible previous versions. So I loaded a, a study plan, I did modification, I click save, basically what is on the database, it's uh, deleted, it's for, for, uh, forgotten, and uh, it's replaced with a new version. Uh, the user may cancel the current modification, and in this case, the copy that is already in the database uh, will not be modified, okay? When saving, the study plan must be validated according to the mix mean max number of credits, okay? Additionally, the user might delete the entire study plan, including the persistent copy. So it means there's a delete button that basically deletes the study plan also on the server side, it's not, that, not just on the client uh, side. After each of these actions, the application will be in the logged in home page, okay? So after you do actions like this, so the delete, okay, you, you will, come back to the initial page, logged in. I mean, where the, the page that is shown to the logged in users. And this uh, part in blue has been added uh, this year just because we have an additional part to this part with the second server and so on. So I modified the old uh, version uh, to add uh, something that resembles more or less what we are going to give you for the, for the, uh, the exams in this, uh, in this year. So additionally, when logged in, users save a study plan, which is already saved on the server. Uh, the interface must display some statistical information about the courses. The interface must show the average of the percentage of students who passed each one of the courses included in the current study plan. And this needs to be requested to another server, server two, which will provide information only to application presenting a suitable JWT token. Okay, so we have a second server, where you need to ask something and you need to be authenticated, actually authorized, not authenticated, because you are authenticated on the first server, and it will reply with some information that we display in the page, okay? The payload of the JWT token needs to be decided by the student. As 
usually uh, uh, that's the same um, situation for all exams. Okay, it's up to you to decide what to put in the uh, JWT payload. Note that the returnance values must be different for the part-time and full-time options. Okay, the information returned by the server should only include the relevant values. Um, so uh, the part-time or full-time percentage, but not both. Okay. And for implementation simplicity, the server too can keep information encoded into a vector of object in the source code and so on. I mean, just not to use a database because otherwise you have to handle two databases, okay, two files and so on, okay? Well, that's more or less the text. So that's the idea. We have a, 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 an application that can handle the study plan. I'm, I'm rushing a little bit, I know, okay, but this was already online. You, you had time to, to read it, okay? And, um, and now we need to start thinking uh, what to do to start designing the application, okay? Like uh, for, for the exams or for any other exams you, you will uh, need to give, okay? So, um, so there are courses. We need to show courses. And at a certain point, uh, in the home page of the application, unauthenticated users see all the courses. So that could be the first page. Okay, let's start, in ter let's start thinking in terms of views, uh, so pages in our application. That is also the first item in the, in the, in the readme, right? The routes. The routes basically means that the views, okay? The slash, the, the root one will have a, a view. Okay, will be a view. Um, so there can be a first, uh, a first view where you see the courses that are seen by anybody, unauthenticated users. Okay, and then at a certain point, the user can authenticate and can start working on its study plan. Okay, uh, and when it logs in. The user can continue to see the same, I uh, know, not can, the users continue to see, okay? It's mandatory, must see the same full course list, but in this page, user may create an empty one, okay? So sometimes there are constraints about the views. That means we would like to uh, have the possibility to see both the full list of courses and working on the study plan in the same view, in the same page, okay? In other cases, you have the possibility to decide if you would like to have a different view, so different routes in your application, okay? Typically, when we put constraint like this, it's because it's easier to work with the application and to test the application, okay? Because we have uh, the list on one side and, and the study plan on the other side, and everything is is there, okay? We don't need to switch back and forth uh, between different pages, okay? Um, in case you have doubts, you can always ask, okay, on the Telegram, uh, or, or, or in the beginning you can put comments on the, on the text as you are doing now, okay? And we will try to tell you, uh, I mean, we will tell you, uh, this is mandatory, this should be done in this way, or it's up to you. Okay, and so it depends on how you would like to implement it. Okay, so let's try to write a sketch of the application. Okay, let me see if this stuff works. So up. Uh, uh, that's the other one. Uh, up. Okay, so basically, you start from scratch. That's a empty paper, okay? It's not really empty, but it doesn't matter. So, you have a first view. No, what's the... Uh, yeah, let me try this. You have a first view, okay? That's a browser, browser window, okay? These are the courses, right? Courses. 
Okay. Courses. That's fine. Unauthenticated. So not uh, authenticated. And then, and then we say, well, there's a second view. Okay. The test, the courses, like before. Courses. And then we could have the study plan. Okay. Study plan. Okay. That's a possibility. This is authenticated. Okay. That's another view. Okay. Uh, and then, well, we need to authenticate at a certain point. You need to decide how to implement the authentication. Probably the, the simplest way is having a third view, login, okay? That's what we had in the lab. So that's a user, that's a password, and that's a button, okay? Enter. No, submit, uh, what was, login. Okay. So, let's think a little bit if everything works as we expect. So, we start from here, okay? We land on the page, so this could be the, the slash route, the initial route. We load the application, we load the application without any path, so that's a slash route. And we get a list of courses. And then, then there could be a way to log in and go to the authenticated uh, view, okay? So let me see, yes. Uh, let's put a button like this, okay? So, Whatever you want, I mean, that's a design, okay? Login. And the login button takes you to the login route. Yes? Sorry, when, when there is no mention about the register page, we have to use just the rows in the database, so we have to create a register page. Register, no, there's no mention about registering users. You mean registering users? So yeah. User are already in the database. Otherwise, it would be another view and really boring coding <laughs> stuff, which is always the same. <laughs> okay? So that's why we don't require it. Okay? It would be simply co copy and paste. It's typically not required unless, uh, I mean, the, the project really focuses on this aspect as well. So the point is that you should allow to register users in, in a way, in another way, and so on. So, but in this case, the application is about registering users, <laughs> okay? Otherwise, we typically have the users already in the database, okay? As we did for the labs, uh, and it I as it is for the exam number one, okay? In the history of this, actually not this course, but the other course, which is similar, I think we never asked the uh, users to register, maybe once, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> So, I mean, in, in any case, you're free to ask these questions. I mean, I said they are really easy to answer, also immediate. So, no need to register user from the web application, okay? I know it's different from an actual application, okay? But, again, you have three weeks. You don't have three months, okay? And the course is eight credits, not 80, okay? So, fine. Uh, we can move to the login, okay, we press the login button, hopefully with the correct credentials, and that's green, right, yes, and we go to this page, okay, and then here you can work, right, so you can do all the actions, okay, Of moving the courses around, okay? Then, uh, if you remember the text, it says you need to be able to create uh, a new study plan in case it's needed. So, let's create it. Uh, oh, no. Create. Uh, 
create. You can delete as well. So, del. Oh, no, this is the opposite. Okay? Things like this. And then, how to move the courses? You can have buttons, uh, for instance. Add. And then you have uh, courses on in the study plan. And you can have a button less, okay, instead of plus, pl uh, minus, sorry, not less. Uh, minus or plus. Or you can have arrow right, arrow left, whatever you like, okay? It's more like, it, it depends on how you interpret uh, the, the interface, okay? Just make uh, something, create something which is reasonable, okay? If you need to move it to the right, don't put uh, an arrow that goes down. Okay, <laughs> that's very simple. Or if you need to add, use a plus and not a, a minus. Okay, that's all. Um, and then, ah, yeah, we, we need to finish writing the routes. Well, of course, I mean, this, this routes are more or less always the same. That's the login route. If we would like to have a login page. And this page, well, that's up to you slash, I don't know, study plan. What, what was the name of your, co that your colleague used? Uh, actually, he did everything in the, ra in the slash. Uh, uh, yes, could be out, our uh, study plan, plan. Okay, yes, that's a question. Yes, actually, you can even do everything in the slash route. I mean, routes are not mandatory, in, and even in, in some applications, uh, uh, even not that much needed. Indeed, in the application that I'm going to publish, actually, we have the slash route and the slash login route, and that's all. Why? Because, I mean, I if, you, if you look at this, uh, at this idea, Basically, the two, the two uh, pages could be implemented in the same component, okay? Of course, it's a big component that uh, has sub-components. One sub-component could be the list of the courses, and the other component could be the uh, one that handles the study plan, okay? And you show the study plan only if you are authenticated. And that's all, okay? And so you have a, st a status in your application as, as you had in the lab, like uh, uh, the logged in, is logged in, uh, or, or maybe the user that has been set, or, or, or it's empty, that gives you the information about the fact that you have uh, the uh, information about the user, so you're logged in or not. And if you're logged in, you render the study plan component, otherwise you don't render the study plan component. So indeed, you can merge the two into a single route. But that's up to you, okay? Once you have components, actually, I mean, it's up to you to decide how to navigate from one route to the other, okay? Of course, if you have two routes, like in this case, then you need to have a, a, a logout button. Uh, logout button. Logout. The logout button takes you at the first view. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean that if you have only one view, you don't have the logout button. But in that case, the logout button just logs you out. And it doesn't change the view, so it doesn't change the, the URL, it doesn't change the route, okay? It's just a different way of interpreting the same uh, um, project. Uh, actually, I mean, there's no real advantage or disadvantages in one solution versus the other. It's really expected that at the exam, there's one student that has uh, an idea about how to implement the views and another has another idea. Okay, so uh, I don't expect that you come, all of you come with the exact same idea. It would be a problem, probably. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you are supposed to work alone, right? 
Okay. Um, so, uh, that's a starting point. Uh, of course, I more or less know it, it should be right because uh, I already have the solution, but you don't have the solution. So, what are you going to do? I mean, you try. You start trying to implement something, okay? Uh, and uh, when you understand that uh, there's something missing or you didn't consider uh, something, you need to go back to this uh, piece of paper and think if it's still valid or not. You missed uh, a view, you forgot to, to show something, um, and so on, okay? Or maybe you, at a certain point, you navigate in your application and there's no way to go back. Well, I need to put a button or a link or something in some places to go back, okay? I cannot reload the application, remember that. But we, we already said that many times, okay? Um, so, once we have a, a rough idea on how to design our application, really starting from a piece of paper, uh, we can try to write something in the readme file, okay? Of course, we can start coding. Um, I mean, but coding should be, you know, should come later in the process. Because before starting coding, you should have a, a clear idea what, where you are going, okay? And writing things down in the readme file should help you in understanding if you missed something. Okay, so let's try to write something in a very simple way, and then I will give you the refined version later. Yes. Yes, there's the possibility to edit the study plan. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Indeed, I forgot. <laughs> okay. Luckily, it was not a, a really a. Um, um, something that needs uh, us to redesign the whole application. I mean, if you're really, really unlucky, you forgot an important part, and maybe you need to redesign a, a big part of your application, okay? Um, actually, the point uh, your colleague has raised uh, is, in, is interesting. Uh, should I have an edit uh, button or not? I mean, that's one possibility. But the edit button, I mean, when you open the page, you load the study plan if it's already ready, present in the server. And then, and then you could start editing. So you could be already be in edit mode, if you like, okay? Actually, this uh, study plan page, it's the page where you do the editing. So I'm not really sure if we need to edit uh, by pressing a specific button and entering in, in an edit mode, okay? Actually, if you are in doubt, try to reread the text and you will discover if a, this page is actually needed or not. If, if you are really in doubt, just uh, send a question on Telegram, okay? And we will tell you, well, it's actually not required. Okay, but I mean, uh, so let's say this is, uh, well, uh, this is still, uh, we don't know, okay? Probably we don't need it. Maybe you try to implement uh, these things uh, and uh, uh, hopefully this edit button doesn't uh, modify your application that much. So you can start uh, trying to code a little bit, see if something, I mean, if the application more or less works as expected, and if it's needed, you can edit, uh, and so you can add the edit button, add the state or something like this, and allow the user move the, the courses, okay? Uh, my idea is that it's probably not needed, but uh, I mean, I try to stick with a solution that requires less coding, of course, okay? That's the same thing you should do. That's simply because you only have three weeks. Of course, it would be nice to design a very good uh, site with 
you know, many, many nice features and so on, but uh, I mean, we only evaluate wha wha what it was required, okay? So, uh, if there are no other questions, let's try to write uh, a little bit of uh, um, readme file. So, let's open it with the Visual Studio Code. That stuff uh, is not what we are looking for. So, week 14. Okay. Don't save. Okay. So actually, remember you have uh, the possibility to open the preview, which is actually what I'm going to do at the exam. Okay? So we can read the, the, the file in a, in a better way. Okay? Of course, we can also read the, the readme file as it is, because it, it's text. Okay? But if, if you format it a little bit, uh, it, it will appear in a very nice way when we try to read it. Okay? So, first of all, uh, don't forget to edit uh, the, you know, the minor things, uh, like, uh, well, this was X and 1, okay? It's not really needed, I know, okay? Uh, study plan, but it helps you, you know, keep things in order. That's your, your ID number. That's, um, actually, I had a five-digit number when I attended the Polytechnic. Uh, Enrico, okay. As I told you, actually the association with your exam is done in GitHub classes. So this is not fundamental, but it's easier for you and it's easier for us if you are searching for things. Okay, uh, you know, just uh, looking at those files, uh, at the readme files, if you brought uh, the correct information. Okay, so the routes. Well, route slash, that's a landing page, but don't write landing page or first page. Of course, it's a first page, but what is shown there? List of courses, okay? This is accessible by anybody, okay? Okay. And then, well, we can have slash login, we said, okay? page, uh, well, login page, login form, okay. Uh, if you want, you can add a bit more information, but don't write that much. I mean, if you use uh, sensi sensible names, so something which is reasonable, from the name of the route, we understand what you meant, okay, what you were thinking about. Uh, Okay, so after successful login, it redirects uh, X to, we actually don't really know yet. Route, let's do study plan. List of, oops, list of courses. Uh, with the uh, study study plan on the right. I mean, it's just for us, okay? This is not the final readme file, okay? It's just for us to think a little bit uh, about uh, what we should do, okay? Um, and probably that's all. Oh, you can have a uh, route, uh, uh, what's slash uh, not found, not found the page. Uh, but, I mean, this is not required, actually, okay? But since it's so, you know, easy to implement, I mean, maybe you copy and paste from the lab, it's already there, <laughs> okay? It's just a component that says, there's nothing here, I'll go back to home, slash, okay? Fine. And then we need to come to the API server, okay? So API server is important because, again, it's the place where your application exchange information with the server, okay?
And that's the second thing we need to uh, think about after the views. And also it's the second thing I will read at the exam before touching your application. Because they need to understand how the application talks with the back end, with the server, which information is exchanged when and, and in which form. Okay? So, of course, there's the post uh, login and so on. I mean, but this stuff, uh, I would leave it for afterwards. Afterwards, I mean, uh, or IPI ca uh, session, okay, whatever. I mean, this is just cut and paste. I don't think you are going to invent anything for login. I hope so, okay? Because anything you are going to invent is probably wrong. Okay, so don't invent anything. It's there. I mean, uh, log in, log out, and get the information about the user. The only thing you need to think about is which information you get when the user is logged in, okay? And the rest is, is always the same, log in, log out, okay? Uh, and, uh, well, uh, let's leave it uh, there for now, okay? And let's focus on what should the application do. The, uh, yes. Um, so I'm putting the double quote just because here, you know, it comes out uh, really nice uh, formatting, okay? Um, API, user prefix as we always did during the lab, okay? It keeps things ordered uh, and nice. So, which API should we design? Well, think about your application. You have a views, right? So, I mean, that's the first view. You enter a page, there's a list of courses. Somebody has to give me a list of courses, right? So, probably we need an API to, to get the courses. Courses. Okay? Let's try to write uh, the methods and the paths first. And later, we will add, uh, you know, further information. We will refine the information so that uh, uh, first we get a general idea and then we you know, expand this idea. Every time we pass again on the same uh, place, on the same API, we think again, is this API correct and so on. So you have multiple possibilities of fixing things that might be wrong, okay? So of course we need to get uh, these courses this is actually public information, right? So we say that anybody can read them. So, I mean, it's just a list of courses with all the information required by the, um, by the application. And then, and then actually we log in. So from the courses we go to login, that's the API to do the login, okay? And we come to the page of the study plan there's still the list of courses, so in case we need, uh, we can reload the courses, but that's still the same API. And then there's the study plan. Actually, we will have uh, APIs to handle the study plan, of course. I mean, at least uh, the first time we load that page, we need to load the study plan, okay? We need to know at least if the study plan is present or not, okay? So let's think, um, in terms of an API that gives us the study plan. Might not be the best choice. Actually, it's not the choice that your colleague has followed, okay? But because, I mean, there are different ways of solving this problem. But let's start with a very simple assumption, okay? Study plan, plan, okay? This is authenticated. Okay, because only the user, the authenticated user has a study plan. If it's me, I have one study plan. If it's you, you have another study plan and so on. Okay, so of course that's authenticated. Okay, and it will return only the information which is related to the authenticated user. And then, uh, 
And then we need to work with the study plan, right? So uh, actually, if, we, if it was empty, we need to create it. And if we modified something, we need to save it, right? Do we need to save the study plan? Actually, I don't know. I, we re, uh, read again the text, okay? Uh, once logged in, users continue to see the courses and so on. May create an empty study plan and uh, add a course, remove a course. During the editing session, the user may save the study plan in a persistent way. This will replace any possible previous version. Okay? So we need to be able to save. So actually, we forgot the button, we forgot something. <laughs> Okay, that's, I mean, that's possible. I mean, we are developing things, uh, so let's add a button, save. Okay, otherwise I don't know how to save. There's no save button. Okay, because save is a different action than editing the study plan. I can edit. So I can add and remove courses, but at a certain point I say save, and this goes to the server. And so this is another indication of the fact that I need an API. If I go to the server, I need an API, a route on the server to call. Okay? So, let's save it. Let's go back here. So we need to save the study plan. Okay? API study plan, okay? Which method should I use? Well, for sure it's not get, okay? It's not delete. Well, delete could be because I can delete the study plan, so let's leave it for later. Should I use put or post? That's basically the choice. There are four methods, get, delete, and uh, post and put. Okay? Well, actually, uh, it depends what's the meaning of this API. Do I really, do, do, do I need to have a, a, an API for editing, an API for creating? I mean, it's possible. Mm, if the plan uh, already exists, I will edit it. If the plan does not exist, uh, I will create it with two different APIs. That's a possible choice. Uh, the text says, uh, well, uh, this will replace any possible previous versions. Maybe we can just do it with a single API because uh, I mean, replacing the old version is like creating a new one every time. So it's like creating a new study plan. Okay? Just that, uh, I mean, just on the server, we just check uh, if the plan already exists, uh, we delete it, and then we create the new one. And if it doesn't exist, it doesn't matter, we create a new one. So it's just an additional if, let's say. Fine, so. If it's a creation, there's n nothing that needs to be thought about. I it's a post, for sure. Okay, creating a new resource, it's always a post. Okay, authenticated, of course. Okay, and then, and then we can say, uh, This is uh, for editing, uh, replacing, replacing as well, okay? So, let's say editing, okay? But editing is actually something that we are going to do on the client side. 
On the server side, we are only editing in the sense that we delete the old and we create a new one. So it's saving, overwriting, okay? That's why I put the uh, quotes. And then, well, the delete, of course, but delete is easy. I mean, typically there's no problem in getting this, uh, this routes uh, correct. I mean, uh, when you need to delete something, you, <laughs> you have a delete and that's all, okay? And then, is this enough? I don't know. I mean, I, I have an idea, of course, but I would like to think with you. Well, we get the courses. We go to the login, that's the API to log in and log out and so on. Uh, we go to the study plan. We have the courses, we have the study plan. We can add then remove courses on the client side. And at a certain point, we need to save. Fine, that's a post that we wrote. We need to delete. That's, that's the delete that we wrote. What about the create? Well, here, here you need to think a little bit. I mean, if the, the study plan does not exist, what, what, what's creating a new plan, an empty plan? Is it possible to create an empty plan? Well, again, reread the text. I'm, I don't know. Well, the user may create an empty one by specifying the full-time or part-time option. This empty list can be edited according to the following instruction and so on. Uh, when saving, the study plan must be validated according to the min-max number of credits. So actually, this sentence probably means uh, that uh, uh, when you save a study plan, it should not be empty, okay? Because there's a minimum, 20 or what was 40? No, 20 or 60 credits for the part-time and full-time, okay? So it should not be empty. That's a possible interpretation. But I understand that it's a bit difficult to think, uh, I mean, to come uh, to a reliable conclusion about this. This is a typical question that you could ask, okay? So, should I be able to save an empty study plan? And so, what, what I'm going to do, if you, if you ask a question like this on the Telegram and so on, well, actually, I don't know. I go and reread the text <laughs> as, you, as you could do. And if I find a sentence like this, I would say, well, no, because uh, we say that the plan must be validated according to the minimum maximum, okay? If there's no such sentence, I would say, well, yeah, probably it's up to you, okay? So do as you like, okay? If you would like to save an empty plan uh, uh, just with the information about full or part-time, it's fine. Okay, since this, there's this sentence, I would probably ask, uh, answer no, okay? Uh, but in any case, I mean, it doesn't really make that much difference. When uh, you are saving the study plan, that is actually this, this API, I hope I didn't, yeah. This API, well, I should decide what to save, okay? Let's uh, put it like this, uh, save, um, full time flag, plus, no, plus uh, list of uh, courses, okay? So we have two things to say when, you, when we create a study plan. If it's a full, full time or, or part time, and the list of courses which are actually inside the study plan, okay? So, we are here in the application, let me save it. In the application, uh, we arrived on this page, we press the create, actually the create is just client 
thing, uh, something that is stays on the client, just a state in the client, okay? So the create is, I mean, probably it's not even a button. This, this would, could be a flag. It's full time or part time. I mean, since there's no actual creation of the study plan on the server, you don't really need to have uh, a button that, that, that uh, makes an action towards the server, okay? Just the status, a state on the client, uh, full time or part time. And then there's another stat a state that is the list of the courses, which is at the beginning it's empty. Okay? Yes. But sorry, but the state of being full state or part-time? Yeah. Also like, uh, moving along in the of the user? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So the state, uh, the full, the full time or part-time could be a column in the DB, yes. But this means that uh, when I do this action, I mean, I decide it's full time or part time, I need to save it in the DB, okay? I'm not sure if it's what you, you meant, or it, uh, because we didn't reach the point uh, uh, of, uh, um, the point where we already decided the tables, okay? The, this information should be put somewhere in the, in the tables, okay? So what you're saying, what you're saying is correct. I mean, it, it's an information which can be associated with the user because the user has only one study plan, okay? Uh, but at this point, we are still thinking about uh, the fact of where you need to keep this information. Do you need to keep it on the on the client, can you keep it on the client until you finish the working on the study plan and you save the study plan or not, okay? So, at the moment the answer is yes, okay? When we send the information to the server, we need to send this information about the full time or part time, okay? And then the server will decide where to put it, okay? Okay. No, they cannot. They cannot because uh, so you mean th this is a different interpretation of the text. So you mean uh, if you have added uh, 20 to 40 credits it's a full time, it's a part time, and if you add the 60 to 80, it's a full time. No, I mean, the user cannot choose which type of study plan because it has already chosen in the DB when they register. No, this, this is not allowed because user may create an empty one by specifying the full time or part time option. That's a requirement for the application, okay? So, you cannot uh, decide, uh, decide it statically before, okay? Okay. So, it's an information that will uh, be stored uh, somewhere in the tables in the database, okay? But we need to allow the user to choose it, okay? Okay. Okay, th these things can be missed, like, like uh, you just say that, well, I thought it was in the DB. I know it's not nice, but when you re realize you did it wrong, well, you need, you need to modify the application, save your application, and then start modifying it to, you know, add this uh, functionality in the APIs, in the views, and so on, uh, that you forgot in the beginning. It might happen, okay? Okay, fine, so, post API study plan, Let's finish the APIs and then we will break uh, for, for, for a few minutes, okay? Uh, yeah, get API study plan. And, well, that's the last thing, okay? The addition for this year. <laughs> Logged in uses uh, save a study plan and so on. Uh, the interface must display some statistical information about the courses, etc. Okay, so to go and ask things for the from the server tool, you need to 
have uh, this API that gives you the token, right? So get uh, uh, get a token with okay API out. But this is more or less already done, right? It's in the lab, authenticated. Okay, we will think later what is inside the payload. Okay, to be done, to do. Okay. Uh, authentication. Authentication APIs, okay, those session and so on. API server 2, well, basically we get this uh, information that was uh, uh, the percentage, uh, the average of the percentage of students who passed and so on. Okay, so what's the name I used? Uh, stats, okay. API stats. API stats, okay. And we will think later about uh, what to put here, okay. Save, okay. That's the actual situation, more or less, it should work, okay? So I'm not, uh, I still miss the delete session and the get the session current, okay? But this is just a copy and, copy and paste. In the get session current, actually we can put, we can get uh, the name of the user if you like. Actually, I think it was not even required. And nothing more i mean if we do all the rest with the with the other apis so we have a get api study plan after we logged in the user we simply call the get api study plan and we get the study plan with all the information okay so the get uh, get the full time flag plus plus the list of courses Okay, that can also be empty. So, I know it's uh, it's heavy. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, but the, the design phase is really the, the most important one. Okay, and uh, uh, now we can we can stop for ten minutes. Okay, and afterwards we'll try to think about the tables. Tables are typically quite easy. I mean. Two, three tables are enough. I mean, we are not a database course, okay? So any, any solution that works uh, reasonably well is fine, okay? And then we'll try to code uh, some of the parts of the application. Okay, if you have any question, of course, I'm here to help you. Uh, so let's break. <laughs>